اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله In alhamdulillah, indeed all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. So we praise Allah, we ask Allah for His help, and we seek Allah's forgiveness. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina. And we seek refuge and protection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any sin, any evil that we commit and any consequences that come as a result of those actions. وَمَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, absolutely nothing in this world can lead that person astray. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْهُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to veer off of the path, absolutely nothing in this world except Allah alone can bring that person back to the path. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحَدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَهُ And I, Ismail, I stand before you believing in the depth of my soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator, our sustainer, our caretaker. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّا سَيِّدَنَا وَمَوْلَانَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنِنَا مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ and I stand before you believing in the depth of my soul that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who we look to as our master, the comfort of our eyes, our exemplar that truly he is Allah's servant and messenger وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْعَزِيزِ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَقُولَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ أَمَّا بَعْدْ So we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send our salutations of love and peace upon our beloved, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as was his sunnah every Friday, you and I are gathered for... Khutbah al-Jum'ah. You and I are gathered for this address, this reminder of Friday. And we are very honored to have entered into this Friday in the time of spring. I know it's October, but it's spring. We have entered into the month of Rabia al-Awwal, the first spring. And inshallah on Thursday, according to our calendar, Thursday marks the 12th of the season of spring. And that date is the date that most of the scholars agree is the birth date of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa And so this month that is called the first spring is a chance for us to experience a revival just as spring brings revival to the earth. We are reminded of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a revival of our hearts. And whenever someone's birthday comes up, we don't 
love them more on the birthday. We love our beloveds over the course of the entire year. But that day provides an opportunity to be reminded of the relationship you have with that person. So nowadays we post pictures on Facebook, we get together and eat somewhere. We celebrate the person not because we love them more on that day, but it's an opportunity to be reminded. And all of us have a connection and a relationship with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why would we not rejoice at the ability to be reminded of him? And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that love is not something of the lips. It's not lip service. You have to, as they say, walk the walk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet to tell us, Qul, say, Ya Rasulullah, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, tell the people that if they claim to love Allah, fattabi'uni, tell them they must follow me, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must, if we declare love, follow his way in order to properly love Allah. In order to properly love Allah, we have to follow the Prophet wasallam, which is an act of love towards the Prophet wasallam. But this is the key. When you love the Prophet wasallam, you love Allah, the one that sent him. And Allah says that when you do that, when you follow the Prophet's way, when you're not just about talk and you walk the walk, He says, يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah, Allah will love you back. وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And Allah will uh, forgive you of your deeds. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ rahim. And Allah is intensely forgiving, all merciful. And as we are reminded in this month, of the importance of the Prophet ﷺ in our life. We love him because he is the one who gives us the blueprint for how to live our life. And if we want to be people who know how to live their lives in a way that will be pleasing to Allah, we have to follow what he tells us of how to live our life in a way that fit his lifestyle. You get my point? If we follow his example of how he lived his life, we will live our best life. And I was just reading a hadith the other day about this that I think exemplifies this point beautifully. And it's hadith from, that comes to us from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who accepted Islam around the eighth year in Medina. So he was a young man he spent two years, maximum three years with the Prophet ﷺ, but he loved him so much, he took the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ as a young man, and he is the person who we have the most ahadith recorded from. And he knew the Prophet ﷺ for two years, and he calls him in the ahadith, he would say something like, I heard from, my Khalili. I heard from my beloved. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ had a lot of people who loved him. Right from his wives to his close Sahaba. And Abu Huraira is with him for two years and he calls him Khalil. So, how did the Prophet ﷺ make him feel for him to think I can call him Khalil, my intimate friend? And so he tells Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu while he was with among a group of the Sahaba he says to them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ya'khudhu anni ha'ula al-kalimat fayamalu bihinna aw yu'allimu man ya'malu bihin who among you will take a few words that I'm going to give you and act upon it or you will teach someone who can act upon it so the Prophet wants to give them advice. 
So he gives them a choice. Right? So uh, Abu Huraira said, Qultu, ana ya Rasulallah, I want to do that. I want to take your words and act upon them. So he took the, the Prophet, said, he said, the Prophet took me by the hand and he counted out five things. Five advices. That if you love the Prophet, وسلم, you will try to do these five things. Okay? And he held him by the hand, by the way. Right? And he pointed on each finger as he went through the five. He says, Ittaqil maharim takun a'abadan nas. If you, if you are cautious of leaving the haram, you will be the most worshipful of people. Being the most worshipful of people is not necessarily the one who prays all night long. It's actually to remove the harmful things that we do, the sin that we do. Right? That completely changes how you view how to live your life. We do those good things, but we work on removing the bad. And we will be among the most worshipful of people. وَأَرْضِ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَكُنْ أَغْنَى النَّاسِ And if you are someone, be content with what Allah has given you in provision, and you will find yourself the richest of people. Wealth is not in the accumulation of things. لَيْسَ الْغِنَى كَثَرَةِ الْعَرَضِ وَلَكِنْ الْغِنَى غِنَى أَنْ نَفْسِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Be happy with what Allah has given you and you'll be the richest person alive. وَأَحْسَنْ إِلَى جَارِكَ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنَ And be kind, do the best to your neighbor and you will be a true believer. Number three. وَأَحِبَّ لِلنَّاسِ مَا تُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِكَ تَكُونْ مُسْلِمًا And love for your brother, for your sister, for another person in humanity, what you love for yourself, and you will be a true Muslim. Right? Completely changes the way that we think about what it means to be a believer, to be someone who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تُكْثِرَ الضَّحَكَ فَإِنَّ كَثَرَةَ الضَّحِكْ تُمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ And then, don't laugh too much. Enjoy life, don't laugh too much. Because indeed, much laughter hardens, or he says actually here, kills the heart. So if we love the Prophet ﷺ, we're going to sing the sheet about him. I personally love to do that myself. Even though I have a terrible voice, it's okay. Right? I do all these things. If I don't try to take these, this example that's given to Abu Huraira and walk the walk, then I just love, my love is lip service. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to not just do lip service to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِوَلَكُمْ وَرِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Qala Allah ta'ala, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim So my khutbah, if I could summarize it is Loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is farud upon us it is incumbent upon us. And in this time of spring, it is a time to remember, to remind ourselves of His way. And the beautiful thing about the Prophet ﷺ that I am always drawn to is the idea that he ﷺ could have had the world given to him. But he chose never to do that. He says, I could have been given Bathai Mecca min dhahab. The entire valley of Mecca could have been gold. But I didn't choose that. I chose to go hungry one day and to be satiated the next day. What leader is like that? 
Why? So every single person here can find themselves in the Prophet ﷺ. You're broke, the Prophet ﷺ was broke. Financially. You lost a loved one, the Prophet ﷺ lost so many. From his spouse to his children. You got slandered, the Prophet ﷺ got slandered. You got boycotted, the Prophet ﷺ got boycotted. And on the flip side, you worship a lot, the Prophet ﷺ did that too. So every single one of us can pull from his life and learn from his life and apply what he taught us in our lives. We have to take the time to learn his life and to love him and allow that love to grow among us. May Allah make us among those who love the Prophet ﷺ. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم اجعل القرآن ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين والمظلومين في كل بلاد وكل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين we have two short announcements before we stand for the prayer. The first is that we make dua for our beloved brother Abdullah Busata, who we held his janazah, I think it was Wednesday. Uh, someone who used to come to the masjid very often and he was known to come before Jummah, sit in the corner over there and read three ajza of Quran before the Jummah began. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him of his sin and to enter him into al-Fadaus al-A'la without any account, without any reckoning and to make this time easy for his family. And to the other families who we've had janazas to for the past few days, we ask Allah to make it easy upon them. Second announcement is that inshallah we have our halaqa that we continue every Friday after Isha. Uh, it's a family halaqa for you and your you know, kids to come. Alhamdulillah we keep a good uh, you know, distance and it's an engaging inshallah halaqa. So if you come with your family, you can. And then finally, we have an announcement after the salah. So please make sure that you stick around for the announcement. <laughs>